What's up Centennial? This is your favorite host, Cami G, reporting from Long Beach, California. Welcome to episode 22. What brings you in today? I just have this really big fear that I can't I can't get over. That's okay. That's why I'm here. What's your fear? I'm just scared of being in water. I just I'm scared of drowning. Thank you. This has really helped me. Yeah, I'm so happy to help. Make sure you tell your friends about it. I will. I'm really afraid of the dark. I'm so afraid of heights. Ever since I was little, I've just always been really afraid of dying. I just want to be free. I want to live my life. Well, there's a fine line between protecting yourself with a healthy fear and paranoia that doesn't let you live a normal life. The only way to overcome your fears is by facing them. feel happy and have fun while they're shopping for a unique gift. Yeah, coming up with the name of the store was difficult. Um, I really liked the name A Girl and Her Dog. My husband didn't like that name and then I liked the name Jenny Wren. That's what my grandma called me when I was little. He didn't like that either and then we started going off of how much birds impacted our lives. Um, I grew up in Garden Grove which is about 20 minutes from here in a neighborhood called The Bird Cage and I lived on Flamingo Drive. All of the streets had different bird names, and so there was that. My husband grew up in England, in the rural part of England, and he collected bird's eggs when he was little. Um, my grandpa fed the pigeons later in his life when he had Alzheimer's, and my mom loved birds, so it just seemed suiting to have a bird name. And out came Songbird. What is unique about it? It's, it's colorful, it's fun, it's, I like to think that it's welcoming. Um, I like to think that you can purchase unique gifts here that are not only unique, but also purposeful. It's not gonna be something that someone's going to hand you and you're just gonna toss away because you can't do anything with it. Like when I shop, I try to think, but will someone use this? Is it a good quality? Is that spoon BPA free? Like I really think about the quality of the products that I put in here. So how do you balance two kids, two dogs, and two parakeets and a business? Not very well. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I. A lot of people say, "How do you do that?" And um, I guess I don't think that what I do is that incredible. Um, I think that everybody has a different setup in life, and I'm very lucky 
that I work for myself, um, that I have flexibility um, to be there for my kids. That is the most important thing to me over the store. You know, being there for them, driving them to school, picking them up from school. Um, I want for them what I didn't have, is, and that was like a present parent. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the community and um, you know it's amazing I've watched people come in here when they were pregnant and I've, and then I've watched their children grow you know I know their dogs I know their parents when they come to town and they all come here and they support me and it blows my mind on a daily basis so now how do you support other businesses or give back to the community well um, quite a few local artists have started here the first place ever doing business um, with their products. Um, I offer them a place to consign their wares um, and consignment is safe for me because then I don't necessarily have to buy the products and they can test like what they're making, they can test their prices um, and from there that I've seen many people grow. Every fourth Friday and I invite my local artists to set up outside of my store at no charge and um, that's a way for them to make more money on their goods, for them to try new items, and it's just a way to give back to them. That's amazing. So, what challenges have you faced to be in a small business? Oh my god. <laughs> so many. Um, I mean, where do you start? At the moment, um, I mean, I don't want to be really negative, but this is reality. I'm, I'm having problems with theft, and um, you know, a police presence on the street. Not that I want a big police presence, but at the same time, even if the police were present and they did arrest the people that were stealing things, they'd be out in three hours. So it's very frustrating right now, um, being a business owner in Long Beach, um, all over, I guess, not just here, but I feel it. What does acceptance mean to you? Well, it's huge. Um, I want everyone that walks through that door to feel accepted here, welcome here. I don't care who you are, what you are, what color you are, who you sleep with, what you identify as. I just want you to be a person in here that feels welcome. Um, everybody gets the same treatment. Um, it shouldn't matter. Uh, to the people that feel like they don't fit, I would say, just be who you are. Don't try to be anything but who you are. Don't try to fit in because it'll never work. So, you know, the days where you're having struggles, just hang tight. It'll pass. This too shall pass, you know. Um, tomorrow is a new day and, and you have the power in your mind to make it a new day, to have a new uh, beginning. I am a jack of all trades. I and the purchasing department, the receiving department, the merchandising department, the customer service department, the human resources department. I am the bookkeeper. I am the exterminator sometimes. I am the cleaner. I am security. I mean, what, what am I not? And I'm a mom. I mean, that's the biggest jack of all trades, right? Nearly half of our waking hours are spent remembering what has already happened or what is to come. Why? You can't alter the past. You can't predict the future. So take a step back and wake up. Live, admire the little things, appreciate the past, prepare for the future, but recognize all we have is now. I think I'm gonna stop talking to him. What? Wait, what happened? I thought you guys were like, it was like that at first, but now it's just weird. So today, on my way here, I literally saw him at the crosswalk, and he was on the other side. And he sprinted across the crosswalk, ran to me when it was a green light. He could have been hit by a car, but apparently he didn't care. And then, yesterday, when I was at the record store, he also was at the record store. I was trying to shop, just trying to ignore him a little bit. I mean, I gave him a wave, because I'm nice but then he just wouldn't stop staring at me. So of course I was like, what are you looking at? And he was like, oh, you, but what do you respond to that with? 
it's just getting way too weird. When he was walking with me, I was trying to hint to him that I kind of wanted to stop talking to him. He was not getting the hint. So I tried to like act like my friend was calling me and like turn a corner. He's not leaving me alone. I have to go off the grid for this guy. My name is Jenny Rocher, and I run the First Young Community Garden in Long Beach. We're the oldest community garden in Long Beach. I've been here pretty much since the beginning. There's just so many little things I can tell you about this, this space. It's a community garden still, but we also are certified as a wildlife habitat, a monarch way station. Uh, we grow produce for the Christian outreach to help feed the homeless. I love it when people come here and they tell me thank you for having this place. It helps me. I feel better. I feel a little depressed. And I, and I love that. It's just something that just reminds me of home. So that's what kept me here you know, all this time is the people, you know, and the plants and to uh, give back. And this was a place that I was able to do that. You know, it's, it's magical. You know, it really is. And it has been for, for so many years. And for it to just um, all of a sudden not going to be here anymore, you know, I was going to be Hold on, emotional. Sorry. I think about the, the insects, I think about the butterflies. The birds. I mean, I'll have to go find some other place to live. If this garden wasn't here, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. This garden has kept me grounded, literally kept me grounded. <laughs> you know, no pun intended, but I mean, once it's gone, doesn't mean I'm not gonna have another place somewhere <laughs> doing something and creating something. I'll be on some sort of adventure, don't know right now where, where it's gonna be. Or I'm always on the lookout when I drive down the street. I'd always go, oh, that would be such a great garden. Look at that. But I, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not <laughs> hateful and vengeful and I don't like them. I'm very uh, appreciate and very grateful that we were allowed and I was allowed to utilize this space all these years. And so do this and bring it to people. If you put a little garden somewhere, what you're gonna create to help the environment and to help people and to help yourself, you know, because you get drowned in concrete jungles and it's easy to get lost in stuff like that. And people forget that. That's a message. If that's a message, does that sound like a message? My name is Camila Gomez, I'm in 10th grade, and I was in Crazy 8's documentary and movie trailer. My name is Aiden, I'm in 10th grade and I worked on the movie trailer. I'm Lennon Braun, I'm in 10th grade and I did the documentary and Nat Pack. My name's Jesse Jansen, I'm a sophomore and I was on movie trailer and Crazy 8's short film. My name is Ethan, I'm a senior and I was a part of the Crazy 8 film and the silent film. Uh, my name is Mac Andrews, I'm in 12th grade, and I was in documentary and commercial. My favorite thing that I did was Crazy Eights. I really enjoyed doing the documentary. We had so much fun with the person that we interview and the story that we did. She was lovely, and I had um, a lot of fun getting to know everyone in my group, so I, I really enjoyed it. Favorite thing that I did was probably just riding the Lime scooters. I mean, we rode those things everywhere. Probably spent too much money, but we don't focus on that. My favorite thing I did was probably the movie trailer, and we won third for it, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, it was really cool to just explore a new city and have fun with my friends. Uh, my favorite thing that I did at STN was probably hanging out with my friends and also uh, being part of those features. Uh, my favorite thing that I did in STN was walk around. I liked seeing all the places. Something that was difficult was working our plot with the prompt because we already had our idea of what the trailer was going to be but then when the prompt dropped we had to figure out how to work the dialogue in and how to work the title in. Acting because they made me do so many takes and it was very annoying. Trying to make our prompt fit because obviously we had, we had an idea going into it but then they gave us a prompt so then we had to like evolve our idea around that and that made it a little challenging. Um, something that was easier than I expected was getting everything planned out. I was really stressed out. Like, we were prepared, 
Uh, but then we had some consequences with like crazy aids and then like it's just everything planned out was like planning everything out was definitely like a challenge but it turned out really good like I thought like it was really good and it was easier than what I thought it would be I was stressed out on the plane but it ended up just fine. Um, something that was easier was um, definitely finding places to film and getting people to be in the film. The documentary was very easy I think we over planned so it was very easy to execute? I would say just finding places because it's like a new city so there was a lot of new places to film and that was definitely easier. Probably editing the movie trailer. Um, I thought it was going to be really difficult and but it low-key wasn't. We found a good song to f or background music to go with it and then we just worked all the clips on top of that. Alright my filming day for the silent film was super chill. It only took us 30 minutes to film and like an hour to edit and we got second so. Um, probably waking up pretty early and then going out to film and then coming back to edit. It was just get up and go. You know, you get down, you meet your group, you get the wristbands, you get the equipment, and then you're off filming wherever. And you got like, we finished right before the time ended, so it was like constantly going. And then two people went to go edit, so it was all hectic. Um, wake up about probably seven, go to the store, get a monster have Beak yell at us for a little bit, and then just get going. Yes, I recommend going to SDN fully. It's such an amazing experience that you get to live. So definitely, if you're able to, try hard, keep working, and hopefully you get invited to SDN. I do. If you guys want to go to STN, make sure you start making good stuff now so you get invited. 100%. That was one of the best trips I've ever had. So much fun, and I hope I get to go next year. Oh yeah, definitely. It was one of the most fun trips I've ever been on, even besides vacation and Camilo's dancing in the background. Yep. We won for real. Bright Meals started as a meal prep company in 2015 and our brick and mortar, which is this store, opened in 2015. So we started out just doing the meal preps and now we also have a full in-store menu and we have juices and smoothies and coffees. I definitely think the meal prep aspect of it makes it unique. Uh, we have a lot of NBA players, we cater to a lot of Olympians, um, we do a lot of that stuff. So not only are you able to come in and enjoy a hot fresh meal, but you can also order stuff so that you're prepped and ready to go for the week. So we, we are a traditional cafe and restaurant in that sense, but the, the meal prep really elevates the experience and sets you up for success for the week, I would say. You want something sweet? Um, a mocha is always good. It's got chocolate in there. Otherwise, if you add... I would say our community in general is very active. We partner with a lot of like chiropractic places and acupuncturists and the yoga studios. So we've kind of become a hub for people specifically in downtown Long Beach to come and have a place to congregate. Um, again, with the meal preps, we're definitely here to support a healthy lifestyle and make sure that you're fed with good food that's going to nourish your body. We have a full nutrition facts label that is completely accurate. We use an incredible dietitian. Um, so just really making healthy food accessible in Long Beach. And you're watching The Loft. Tucked away in the streets of Long Beach, California, is a small business run by a husband and wife duo called Long Beach Woodwinds. My name is Rusty Higgins, H-I-G-G-I-N-S, and I own the store with my wife. We're a band instrument store, mainly saxophones, clarinets, flutes, and we do have trumpets and trombones, and no percussion. No strings, no guitars, no amplifiers, nothing electronic. As far as refurbishing them, so they'll take the instrument apart and they'll clean it, um, and they'll take out all the pads, and they'll and they'll replace they'll replace the pads. The brass usually take a lot less because there's so much less less involved. Like a trombone, there's only one moving part. Old becoming new. I don't know. It's, it seems like the. Um, the classical music that you hear around town with the with the with the Phil and uh, the Pacific Symphony and things like that is not as much popular with young people. I mean, one, encouraging young people to be actively listening. You know, they say they say that the uh, the music uh, that you like when you're 16, 16 years old is usually the music that you like for the rest of your life. Why is art important? Like especially being a jazz player, it's an art form. Improvisation is definitely the art aspect of it, I think.
Hotel store, overrated. It's too expensive. Five dollars for the water and six for a monster. Nah, too much. I definitely think that the hotel store was overrated. Everything, just everything in California in general was so expensive. Like, I paid $20 for an avocado toast. Literally, who in their right mind thinks an avocado toast is $20, like, genuinely? Missing three days of school is underrated. It's great. Ma making up for the work definitely sucks, but just being out of school is amazing. Probably overrated. I have no clue what I'm doing in pre-calc now, so. Missing three days of school, I'd love to say it was underrated, but it was definitely overrated because I'm back and now I have to take like three tests all in like one day, so. Christopher Columbus High School is so overrated. They only win stuff when they have like weeks to make it. They didn't win anything when like you have a certain amount of time to do it. Like, so overrated. Overrated, super overrated. Them and all the Hawaiians. <laughs> um, Christopher Columbus High School, overrated. They sound like some bums. Not gonna lie, I could probably go film for film. We could go camera for camera, PSA for PSA, silent film for silent film. 10 o'clock curfew is so overrated, Mr. Beekner, if you're watching this. I low-key hate you for that. Like, I was trying to stay out and hang out with my friends. You know, it was a fun trip. I clutched up second, and you still didn't let us go out past 10. Overrated, that's too early. Um, no, I couldn't even get my tacos from my taco truck. The 10 p.m. curfew, I thought it was a little overrated because I wasn't tired by 10 p.m. Like, I still didn't go to bed until, like, 11.30. Casey Neistat. Um, it's Casey Neistat. What can I say? He was great. Properly rated? Casey Neistat was underrated because I didn't know who he was at first, but he seemed pretty cool, and his videos look cool, so I don't know. I think Casey Neinstadt is so underrated. Like, he is a really good YouTuber, and I've watched him since, like, his David Dobrik era. David, his David Dobrik era. And just seeing him, like, in person was, like, I think one of the coolest experiences, like, I've ever gotten to experience. Casey Neinstadt, overrated. Honestly, I had no idea what he was talking about. He was just yapping. Good morning, I'm your host Kay. And I'm Kay. And welcome to your weekly... Oh my god. This school's tweaking out. On Monday of this week, during the final moments of first period, the fire alarm went off. As my whole class was getting ready to exit the school, the intercom came on and the nice lady told us that we had to ignore the fire alarm. That's funny, because it didn't stop alarming us. Please help. Last week, Centennial had installed metal detectors at the front of the doors. Yippee. Well, I wasn't there. I was in Long Beach. Okay. We get it. You're special or whatever. My bad. Anyways, just wanted to say congratulations to our amazing AV students for winning four awards at STN in Long Beach. What were these awards for? third place for movie trailer and Crazy Eights documentary, and second place for silent short film. Wait, so what's the fourth award? Well, The Loft was finally recognized as a weekly broadcast show at the STN Excellence Awards, although I guess we were too excited to pick up our medal. Hopefully they're kind enough to mail it to us. And that's it for your weekly update this week. Thank you, and have a great weekend. That's it for this week's Centennial. I hope you guys enjoyed our episode, and we'll see you next week. Go Knights!